Hello everyone, my name is Sergei Mashchenko. I'm from Sharknet Alliance. Here's my email and today I will be talking about video editing with a powerful multi-platform open source tool called KDE and Live. Here's the overview of the talk. Brief introduction will be followed by discussion how to provide inputs, sources for your video projects. Then I will cover basic video editing techniques. I will cover only some of the more advanced features. We will not have time to go through all the features. And I will also touch upon audio editing using another open source tool called Audacity. And I will finish by describing how to render your final project. First introduction. Here's the link to the website for KD and Live. I will briefly show you the, the website. And as you can see, you can click here, download. You can install either Windows or Linux or Mac version. A brief history. Uh, this software package has been around for many years. I personally used it for probably the last five years or so. Originally, it was developed for KDE Windows Manager under Linux, hence the half of the name. But since uh, early ages, uh, it evolved, it became truly multi-platform. And now, at least for the last two, three years, it works perfectly fine under any Linux distro, Windows, and Mac. With a caveat, I think Mac is only Intel CPU supported. So before I show you the software, let's uh, quickly discuss what kind of inputs you can use in your video projects. And I'm focusing specifically on video production uh, targeting research. So when you want to produce a research video clip, what inputs would you use? A very obvious source is, would be screen capture, uh, capturing the actual screen as video, also microphone and computer audio. Uh, it happens that Zoom, the software I'm using now for this live presentation, is actually a very good high quality screen capture app. It can capture all three of the above with up to 4K resolution. So I would warmly recommend to use for your at least initial attempts to do screen capturing for your video projects. There are some caveats. In particular, it looks like it struggles if uh, some of your software is using hardware acceleration for video. Some media players do gaming, for example, or some visualization software may be using hardware acceleration. And in that, those cases, you might want to consider a much more powerful screen capturing open source multi-platform software called OBS Studio. I'm providing the link here. Let me demonstrate the website. And as again, you can download either Windows or Mac or Linux version of OBS Studio. I do not have time to describe the software. I might want to consider making a separate presentation about it. And of course, this research focus. So one possible source of uh, video is simulation or visualization results. Uh, many research software can generate animated image sequences from your results of simulation or visualization. And I will show you shortly, KDE and Live can easily convert those sequences into video clips. Uh, alternatively, some of the software can generate ready to use video clips and then, then you just uh, import them into the video editor. And of course, you can always mix all this with live video recorded with camcorders, smartphones, web cameras, etc. Now it's time to actually see the KDE and Live software. I will show you the main elements. I'll describe how to load inputs, how to deal with layouts, projects, and very simple editing techniques. When you open KD in Live for the first time, you'll probably see something like this. Uh, by the way, if you don't like dark theme, you can always go to settings and color scheme and switch between dark and light. I think now it comes as light. I prefer dark because it's easier to see video elements. They're more better emphasized. All right, one great feature about KD in Live, it's extremely highly configurable. The window you see, everything can be moved, resized, dropped, uh, created different tabs, etc. So let me demonstrate simple, very simple things you can do. Uh, first window you want to deal with, and by the way, even before I do that, I want, first thing you want to do, file and new project. So we want to start with a new project, and there you should choose the destination, your project resolution and frame rate. Typically, you choose uh, frame rate and resolution matching the longest video clip in your project. So let me choose 4K, 25 frames per second. Everything you can use, default values, click OK. So now we are dealing with the new 
project. So the first window we're going to learn is this one. And specifically, there is a tab, by the way. Windows typically have multiple tabs. So this is the tab, which is important. It's project bin. This is where I'm loading uh, input sources. And you do that by clicking on this arrow. And in most cases, you use this option, add clip or folder. So this option is used to load video clips with or without audio. It can load audio, just audio. And it also can uh, load the images. And it on the fly, it will create a static video clips from the images you load. For this simple presentation, for now, I'm just going to load this short uh, webinar recording from two weeks ago done by my colleague Paul, just a very short fragment of that webinar. So uh, there will be progress bar and you have to wait until progress bar is finished uh, until you before you can do anything with this clip. So the other window is here. It's clip monitor. There are a couple of tabs clip monitor, which means you can click anywhere in this window and you see the video and you see audio oscilloscope oscillogram. And if you play uh, press here or press space bar, it will start playing optimized because the idea so this is a clip monitor. So the next important window is on the bottom. This is the most important window. This is your time. This is the tracks where you assemble your video and audio together in the final uh, project. And the way you assemble it is by dragging and dropping your clips, which are listed here. By the way, you can always come back later and keep downloading more material as needed. On your tracks, by default, you have double audio video. It's a single, but consists of two tracks, audio and video, and also extra video, extra audio. This should be sufficient for uh, most of simple video editing projects. But as I will be showing later, there are ways to add or remove tracks uh, as needed. So let me drag my clip with my left mouse click. I'm dragging it and placing it here. So it is video and audio. That's why you can see both. So the top one is video and the bottom one is audio. Audio conveniently shows you the volume. So it, you can see it's almost at the normalized level. So it, when it almost reaches the top, it's well normalized. Here's the basic thing you do in this uh, window. If you left click with your mouse, you can travel through, through your timeline. Uh, the coordinate in your timeline is given here. This is the project monitor window, by the way, the also very important window. So this is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So I'm doing 25 frames per second. So uh, it's uh, precise information on my current cursor position. So uh, one layout change I'm going to show you. Adjust the rest. You, if you want, you can do it on your own. Uh, I don't like to have clip monitor as a separate window because it's kind of distracting. I only want to see either of the two, not both at the same time. Here's a tip how to rearrange tabs. So uh, I grab this tab clip monitor with my left mouse click. So I grab it and pull it down. It becomes a separate window. I can drop it as a separate window anywhere I want, for example, here. But instead, I want to highlight the destination window. You see it's highlighted, it's light blue, and I drop it there. So it becomes a separate tab. So now both clip monitor, project monitor are here, uh, but it is still very convenient. Uh, for example, I'm in project monitor. If I switch to clip, it will instantaneously switch to clip monitor. If I switch to project, it will switch to project monitor. So you never have to touch these tabs actually. It's very convenient. Next thing, uh, this window, I don't really need it anymore. I'm going to kill it. So I'm going to maximize the space for my project monitor. Normally I'm using a lower density for my screen. I have a 4K screen. So these elements look bigger. So it's more convenient to deal with it. The reason I made it like this, so it's visible even on standard HD resolution monitors, just for the purpose of this presentation. So, okay, we learned the basic things about dropping clips on your timeline. So uh, another thing I want to show the zoom in, zoom out in your timeline can be achieved with the slide in this uh, slider, moving the slider, or you can uh, come here and control mouse wheel. You can zoom in, zoom out at the current location I am, or another way, control plus control minus. So there are multiple ways to do the same thing. And I often use this button, which is auto stretch. So it just stretches the whole thing to maximize the space inside the window. So let's learn more uh, basic facts about uh, timeline. 
when I left click with my mouse on either here, audio or video, it highlights and highlight means it's depicted through orange color. Anything you highlight is in orange. It highlights both. What does it mean? So there is the concept in KDN Live called grouping. If you load a video clip which has both audio and video, it comes as a group. Uh, there are ways to group or ungroup anything in your, inside your timeline. Uh, this is already comes pre-grouped, but if uh, what are the advantages of grouping? For example, I can grab my clip and move around as a group. It moves together, perfectly synchronized. But if at any point I want to change that behavior, I want to ungroup, first I left click to highlight and then right click anywhere here. I do ungroup. Now these are two independent elements. I can move it around anywhere I want, uh, this or this. And then for example, I can regroup I can also group more than two elements. I can group any number of elements. For grouping, I have to click on one, left mouse, and then shift click to add the other element, and then shift click continue more and more and more. Alternatively, you can say control mouse dragging. Sorry, no, shift mouse dragging. Okay, shift mouse dragging, uh, the, all the elements which will be covered become highlighted. And finally, you can just say control A, and it will highlight everything inside your timeline. So either way, once you highlighted everything uh, you want to group, you right click anywhere on these clips and then you group them. And now they become a group. You can drag them around and they behave as a group. Uh, normally uh, you wanna keep video with audio if it comes together, they need to be synchronized. And also I will show you, you can use Control Z to undo things. And it has even very powerful undo history. Everything I do can be uh, you know, track down through, throughout your project editing. So there is a very powerful undo history mechanism. I'll just use Ctrl Z just to switch back. Now we are back, we are single group, which is synchronized. So once you arrive at the layout, which you kind of like, uh, my strong advice is to save it as a custom layout. Even though when you exit the software, load it again, it will start the same layout as you finished last time. Sometimes you screw things up. For example, don't click here. This will bring back your default layout and there is no way to undo this. So to avoid this kind of problem, I wanna save my layout. Come in here, view, save layout. And then I give not standard name, I give my name, for example, mine. Then I click okay and then it's saved. And then anytime, I screw things up. I can come here, view, view, load layout, and then my own layout is at the very bottom. So that's a very easy way to uh, to re restore my layout. All right. So let's uh, another thing important to mention: projects. So start saving your project. First, give it a name. Save as, and I'm gonna be inside this folder. Let's say it's mine. Uh, the beauty, one of the beauties of KDN Live, it's mul truly multi-platform in a sense. If I copy that project file plus all the input sources to another computer and launch KDN Live on that computer, I can restart where I stop. And it doesn't matter which operational system. So I often start video project on a workstation, which is Linux. I come home, I download through internet the project file, the input sources, and I continue editing under Windows and then vice versa. I can move it back to work. Very convenient. So now let me just double check with my slide. I covered these basic points. I'll probably show one more loading input, how to load images sequences. I'll show you in a second. And then we'll discuss simple editing techniques and fixing bad video parts. Uh, to load image sequences, I click here and I, instead of using this option, I'm going to use this option, add image sequence. So here you have to choose the folder. So I have a folder called frames, which has my old simulation results as JPEG files. Then you choose image type. I know JPG. Now it shows up as frames. There are 216 frames in my animation. Importantly, you want to change frame duration. By default, it's five seconds each frame. Instead, I want to set it to zero. Oh, zero and then i want to make it one frame uh, one image is one frame so i want to make true smooth animation from my results of simulation and then if you don't see anything here you're either inside wrong folder or chose wrong image type i click ok so now it created a clip which is an animation of cosmological simulation of small galaxy formation and you can see, uh, by the way, all the uh, rendering inside KD in life, probably not very smooth. 
the final pro uh, final video will be smooth it just it's doing a live rendering so it might be a little bit imperfect so this is another way to add video elements to your project bin all right so we are now ready to start fixing your video very simple editing so this is a screen capture so it's from a webinar delivered two weeks ago by my colleague paul typically when you do screen capture you have bad beginning you want to cut off beginning and there is bad ending you want to cut off both so in my case it's black so i want to cut off black beginning black ending uh, the way i navigate i can click and drag my mouse around until i roughly find the point where the good part starts roughly and then i use keys arrow right arrow left arrow to go frame by frame until i find the very first good frame then I have to click with the left mouse button here, highlight it. Here I'm going to teach you first command. It's very convenient to memorize a few simple shortcuts for a few simple uh, commands. And the first command you learn is razor. I'm going to cut one uh, clip into two clips. So for that, I use shift R. Shift R cuts my clip into two clips at the cursor position. By the way, we are still preserving grouping. So that now we have two groups interesting point here uh, now how to delete how to get rid of this part i highlighted left click mouse and then i hit delete button uh, we are left with a gap which will be rendered as black space we don't want it so we're gonna grab it and pull it all the way to the left uh, let's do the same with the right side so again i'm dragging my mouse around until i find roughly position of ending and then i use arrow until I hit the first bad frame, left click my mouse and shift R razor. Left click here to highlight it, delete. Okay, so we did absolutely basic editing. And at this point, yeah, you, you probably want to keep saving your project just in case. I'm going to zoom back so it's stretched. So, what else simple issues you can fix in your video? On purpose, I inserted a small imperfection i insert a few black frames so how to get rid of black frames here just just a few black frames if what you are showing is static more or less static as what it is here these are slides uh, the very easy way to fix this problem is to find the beginning of the bad part uh, maybe uh, you got a pop-up from your email or something so there is a little bit imperfection in the video you want to cut off a bit of video and but you want to also patch it and I'll show you how to do patching. Now I do arrows until I reach first bad frame. C left click, highlight, shift R to cut. Then I'm using arrow to find the end of bad region. You can hear also audio in the background. Okay, this is the end. Left click, shift R. I still wanna keep my audio. If I just click here and delete, that's not what I want. I want audio to preserve. I want video to be patched. So I'm going to say Control Z. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to ungroup these two things. So I want to operate independently on video. I'm going to say ungroup. Now we can click on video, hit delete button. And now it's gap. Now this gap can be filled out with a patch. Uh, gap is always black. So if you don't put anything there, it's still going to be black. How to create a patch? I'm going to, this is static video, more or less, it's a slide. Here's the uh, technique. You go to the good part of the video, you right click, and then there are two options. You can either extract it as a PNG file to your folder, or even more conveniently, you can extract and automatically load you to Project Bean. Let's do the second option. So it gives a unique name. You hit say save, but it also adds automatically here. And all the images you load inside here are created as static video of standard duration, something like five seconds. It's easily changeable, the length easily changeable, so it's not a problem. So now let's use it to patch my gap, to fill out the gap. For that, it's very convenient or important to have extra video track available. So there is extra video track. If you don't have one, you can always right click and I'll show you later to insert track. So we do have empty track. So we're going to grab this uh, patch video and we're going to drag it on this track, additional track. So KD in life behavior is it's magnetic. So the edges are click in place. So it's very convenient. So I'm going to click in place where this gap starts. 
and then I can left click mouse, I can drag the other end until it clicks, for example, or I can make it more narrow, and then I can just drag it inside, push it one way or the other way, and then just pull the other way all the way to fill out. So this way we did not change audio at all, but we filled out the gap with static uh, video. So we can now see now because the idea of profiling your code. There is no artifact. So we fix the problem we had in the static part of our video. Uh, there is one more issue in this file, in this video clip. I did it on purpose by hand, but this end of the audio uh, has very low volume. As you can see, it's much, much low. And volume is more like logarithmic. So it's indeed, it's very low volume. How can I fix volume in one part of my clip? For that, I will teach you to apply your first effects. So effects are listed here. There is a bunch of audio, video effects. They're grouped by topics. So I'll be using volume effect. The property effects, they can only apply to the whole clip because I only want to fix a part of my clip, which means I have to create a new clip separately by cutting it. So I'm getting to the point where I need to cut it. I'm usual left click, shift R, razor. So now I can apply effects to this either audio or video. In this case, I want to just apply gain effect. There are multiple effects. So I choose just a simple one, gain. And I drag it to the audio part of my clip. The fact is that it's still part of the group with video doesn't matter. It allows me to apply my effect. Uh, when you apply effect, it creates a small window. So it tells you there is effect applied to this part, audio or video. There is a bunch of video effects, audio effects. So this is audio effect. To see the parameters, because all effects come with changeable parameters, I click on the name and here's the tab effects, composition parameters. So the only parameter here is basically the gain, how much louder or quieter you want to make it. Uh, for my test, I think four or 500% is good number. I hit enter. Uh, unfortunately, it does not modify the oscillogram. So, but I have to listen to to see if it's the same volume. That for the optimized version, it sounds more or less the same uh, volume. By the way, when I do rendering, first one to second, a bit garble audio. This is just a live rendering artifact. Uh, I suspect if your computer is more powerful, maybe has SSD drive and faster CPU, it will not have this artifact. When you render the final project, this will not have the artifact. All right, so we learned simple techniques of editing, editing, and adding effects. And anytime you want to delete an effect, for example, by the way, you come here, click on the effect, and then you can delete or change parameters at any time. Uh, so I'm done with the simple editing. And uh, let's talk about somewhat more advanced topic. Let's discuss transitions and related topic, combining multiple video audio tracks. And then we'll discuss, cover the other topics here. Let's discuss the using multiple tracks. And for that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I create some room, leave some room here. I'm going back to project bin. So I'm going to load one more animation. It's my own simulations. It doesn't have sound, just video. It's a video clip. I'm going to use it to create a smooth transition between two different clips. So this is a simulation of interstellar asteroid Oumuamua. So let me load the animation. You can uh, play the clip. It's not smoothly playing because again, it's just rendering uh, live. But this is the animation. Uh, so how do I make transition? The simplest possible transition is just to grab it and add at the end. As you can see, there is no audio, just video, but this is not a problem. And then it's going to be a symbol switching over from one video to another video. Easy. But for example, I want to create nice, smooth transition. And there are a bunch of different transitions you can find here inside compositions. So effects apply to the whole clip, single clip, and compositions typically can apply to more than one clip. In particular, transitions typically apply to two clips. So uh, to make smooth transition, I need to make these two clips overlap, partially overlap. This is the only way to make it as a smooth transition. So how to do that? Uh, let me move a little bit further away. If I click here, uh, there is a useful command. Alt arrow, alt right arrow, alt left arrow lets me travel between edges of my clips precisely. So I don't have to spend time fine tuning the end and beginning. 
So let me go to the end of the old video. Here's the old position. And I want my transition to be, let's say, three seconds long. So I'm going to backtrack three seconds. Instead of 14, I'm going to make 11 seconds. Hit enter. So here's my cursor position. That's where I want my new clip to start. And then I use KDA and leaf uh, magnetic properties. It locks in right there where it needs to be. So now they're precisely three second overlap. Now it's important concept. Uh, once you start adding video on top of each other, uh, the way it's interpreted by the editor is as though the observer is sitting up there and looking down. So if you're here, the, uh, the nearest part of the video you can see is this video. That's why the project shows you this video. But when you enter another video, which is closer, which means higher in the tracks, you see the higher video. It takes precedence. You still can see uh, in the back if it has different aspect ratio as in is the case here. But generally speaking, the highest video is the one which you see, right? Unless you use some special transparencies, and I will be showing you how to use transparency. You can make the whole video transparent or semi-transparent. You can make parts of video transparent. And this is a powerful technique you can use to fix problem or add some special features to a video. So uh, right now, there is no smooth transition, right? If you start playing the clip, you want to you find out transition that and completely overlapping. So let's let me demonstrate how you apply transition. I go to composition tab and I like to use very simple dissolve transition. There are more powerful, more fun transitions like transform and I think composite and transform. So you can actually specify the path of one video, how it's going to travel, bounce back, spin around and change its transparency. You can do any complex combinations like that. I will not have time to explain it. Instead, I'll show you just very simple dissolve transition. I'm going to click and drag the icon and place it at the beginning of my top clip. And if it's not clicked in place, I can click it here. So I want my effect to span from the beginning of new clip until the end of the old clip. Uh, if you, I click on uh, effect, I see the things I can change. So by default, is if you do this the way I showed you, it should work as is. So if I travel through my timeline, you can see I can slowly transition in. There is a smooth transition into video only. Audio is not being modified by this approach. If it doesn't look this way, something goes wrong, you can try to play with a reverse ordering or choosing manually composition track. But usually it works as is. I click again, let me uh, by the way, I hit space bar. I don't know if I mentioned that. You, you hit space bar at the cursor position. It starts play back of your project. You find out that for the optimized version. Okay, so that's a, a simple transition we just learned. Let's talk about using transparency to do some fun stuff, to fix video or to add new elements to the video. Uh, let me demonstrate one way to do this. Uh, for example, I want to add some static element to this video. Uh, for whatever reason, I decide I want to create a light gray frame edges around my video. It's convenient to start by uh, capturing or extracting the frame and then editing it in an editor, image editor. So I'm going to save it as this image, 450, save. And then I'm going to use yet another open source image editor. It's called GIMP. So let me switch to GIMP. Uh, uh, you need a powerful enough editor which can operate with transparencies. And that's what we need here. And PNG format is very convenient because it does record transparency or alpha channel. So I'm going to open the file I just created. I think that was the one, 450. And I just use it as a template. So uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create a draw static element which will be visible in the frame. And the rest I want to erase, make transparent. So you can see through the actual video underneath. So quick and dirty, I'm going to use a selection tool. Nothing precise here. So I select it and then I hit delete. So I erase everything inside the frame. So you will be able to see through the transparent area, the video underneath. And for the rest, I'm going to select invert. Then I'm going to choose a uh, the two uh, bucket fill tool. Make sure it's fill hole selection. I choose the color. It's gray color. That's what I want. And I click inside my frame. Now it's a gray frame. Uh, and then I will just save. No, 
sorry, so overwrite. This thing is to overwrite PNG. You want to make sure it's a PNG format. I'm going back, going to project bin. I'm going to load this image I just edited as a uh, static video. As usual, it has the default duration, five seconds. The clip monitor doesn't show transparency, it shows it as black, but this is fine. This is actually transparent. Remember the rule, if you want something to cover other elements, other video, it needs to be above the other video. So right now I don't have anything above, I don't have space, so I have to add one extra video track. I promise you to show it, now I'm going to show it. Right click with my mouse here, insert track, and then you choose how many tracks you want to add, location above V2, for example, that's what I want, above V2. And then choose video track, audio track, or combine audio video track. I need video track, so I press OK. OK, it gives me uh, room now, extra track, V3. So anything I put here will block or partially block my animation below. So let me drag the frame I just created and put it here. And remember, you can easily left mouse drag either beginning or end of your static video. So as you can see here, you can see the frame because it is the element above my animation, but you also see through the transparent elements. And by the way, you can also use semi-transparent. So anything with transparency, you can uh, basically do the tricks. Uh, maybe you forgot to draw axis here, or you need to put a label or watermark, whatever. So you can use that. Or there is some kind of artifact you need to cover, hide it. So all these can be fixed by using transparency. Right, switching back to accelerate and slow down parts of your video, it's another useful technique. Sometimes uh, you want to accelerate things. When you compile your software, it takes forever. You want to accelerate that. You don't want to show it the whole, you know, five or 10 minutes it took. So there is an easy way to do that. You go to the clip you want to accelerate. If it's just part of the clip, you do the usual technique. You click at the beginning, shift R to cut. And let me zoom in. And then let's say I'm going to come in here, shift R to cut. So I want to accelerate just this part. To accelerate any video clip, you highlight it and then right click, change speed. So uh, default speed is 100%. Let's say I want to make it five times faster. I'm going to make it 500%. It, did, it accelerated properly, but it also created a gap. So in this case, uh, there is no audio. So I just grab whatever I have on the right and pull it over, maybe adjust my video if need to. And now it's spinning, should spin much faster. It's hard to see because rendering speeds are not great on my computer. But once you render it, it's gonna be very nicely, smoothly accelerated. If it does have audio, my advice, typically it will also be accelerated. You typically wanna mute it or delete it because it will not sound right, most likely. Uh, so let me uh, show another trick. Uh, what if, well, let me save it, so that's a good idea to keep saving it. What if you uh, keep adding clips, effects, etc., etc., and then realize one of your early clips, uh, by the way, you can also drag and drop here, or just use mouse, your wind, uh, the mouse wheel of the mouse to travel through your timeline. You decided you want to delete part of the video here. Click here, uh, Shift R, and maybe click here, Shift R, and you want to actually delete both audio and video. Click Delete. Okay, so, but if now you try to fill out the gap by moving this element, you see you create another gap and so on and so forth. So actually what you want to move, you want to move everything to the right of this clip. You can try to highlight everything and then move it together. For example, Shift, mouse, drag, something like this, and then it's kind of awkward. Then you can move it around. It's possible. You can move it here, but this is not the best way to do it. Let me un, uh, uh, unhighlight it. The proper technique is to switch from the default tool, which is the selection tool with the key S as in Sarah. So you click S, you switch to the default selection tool. Sometimes you switch to M tool, spacer, M. And now the, uh, you see cursor changed. What it does, if you drag the element, it will drag not just the element, everything to the right. So this is the tool to use to fill out gaps when you create at the beginning, sort of early clips in your project. Once you filled out, don't forget to switch back because it doesn't behave.
properly. So you want to be most of the time in this S mode, selection mode. All right, so we did that fix. And I think one more thing I'm going to show subtitles. Sometimes you want to put some text information. Let me give you an idea. For example, you came here and you forgot to put description. You want to say what the red dot on this video is. So let me show. Okay, there is a red dot. What is this? You want to give some explanation. You want to briefly show some text message. The way to do it is via subtitles. Or at least one way to do it is via subtitles. For that, go here into subtitles tab and then if you press plus it will create subtitle at the current cursor position with a default length now you can start typing text here and it will show up in your monitor let's say red dot is the end of the y-axis because i think that's what it is uh, i'm gonna fix a typo here and then you hit enter voila uh, you can adjust uh, starting position ending position as you wish and as you render your video, it will pop up where it's needed. You can change color, by the way, and uh, other parameters. And then it's finished. You can always come back, double click and change the text. So it's not actually a video, it's a text element. You can come here and by the way, you can delete it. You can change a lot of things like text format. Uh, many other parameters can be changed. But how do you export uh, subtitles? How to uh, give subtitles uh, with the final project. If you leave it as is, if at the end you start rendering your final project, I'll show you how, what's going to happen? These uh, subtitles will be hard coded into your video, which is fine. If that's what you want, it will always show it's going to be part of your video, then you don't have to do anything else. But there is also a way to save your subtitles, export them as a SRT file. It's a standard text format for subtitles. So you go to project, subtitles, export subtitle style file, give it a name. Let's say mine SRT, save. Uh, by default, name is the same as the main of your project. Uh, and many software players, when you start playing the main video file, will automatically pick up the SRT file with the same name. And then you can optionally turn it on or off. If you do it that way, then probably you want to make sure it does not burn into the video. So before you do the final rendering, you want to hide the whole subtitle strike by clicking here. And then it's not going to render in your final project. By the way, by the way, this is true for all of the tracks. Clicking here will hide this track. Clicking, uh, moving down, clicking on any audio track will uh, uh, mute that particular track. And uh, one more uh, interesting tip. Sometimes you come here, you do mul you have multiple tracks, you start deleting parts of these segments of your video, and then you realize you shouldn't have deleted it because you want to go back and do some other deletion, or maybe you don't want to delete it. So there is a way to remove the clip without it actually deleting it. For example, here, if I want, I can hide any video or audio element by highlighting it right click and then disable clip it is still there but it's not going to show it it's as though you deleted it but if later you realize you actually you don't want to delete come back left click and then right click enable and voila it's there you can do some other editing it's a useful technique so now i think we are to the final part of my presentation let's talk about audio editing using separate to audacity kd and live also has some audio too tools but i prefer audacity it just it's more powerful and to me it's more convenient so let me show how can you fix some common audio issues using audacity here's the link for audacity i'm going to show the website it's again it's multi-platform uh, windows uh, mac and linux very conveniently has lots of lots of nice features i'm gonna start a new project uh, let's say it's 4k resolution uh, I'm going to save my old project. I'm going to load a video clip, which I created with my cell phone. It's just a little bit of my workstation and me talking also. Uh, so this is my video smartphone. It has audio and video both. Uh, if you get warning like this, you can just hit cancel. That's fine. It will render everything you load here and add to your project bin. Uh, project timeline will be rendered both spatially 
and uh, temporarily will be interpolated into the target project destination property. So you don't have to worry about matching frame rates or resolutions. It will be properly rendered at the end. So in this case, it's a short video clip, just me talking, do testing. saying testing. This is testing. And just video. moving my camera around. So if you use a low quality microphone and cell phone usually have low quality, lots of noise, it's maybe volume is not right. How do you fix these issues? So first of all, let me drag it into my timeline and let me actually not put it at the very beginning. I'll show you later why it's important. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. Uh, one technique is when you record something with a sound, with a low quality sound and video, you can also use external audio recorder. Or in my case, I used a headset and I recorded high quality sound to the computer. And I have it as a separate uh, audio file. And it's located in my video, no, sorry, uh, my video headset. Before I load it here and show you how to sync my new audio to the old audio, I wanna use Audacity to fix it because even high quality recorders have some hissing sound, some humming sound, maybe the volume is not perfect. Let me show you how to do these two fixes with Audacity. This is Audacity, I'm gonna open and I'm gonna uh, load this My Video headset. So I use my headset to record audio in parallel to my cell phone videos. I did both at the same time, not synchronized in any way. I'm gonna use KDN Live to synchronize audio to the video at the end. So for now, I just wanna fix volume and noise. So as you can see, the volume is not right. It has to be stretched more. So it's not normalized and you see some noise in between. So let me first uh, highlight, I click here, I highlight the whole thing and I'm gonna do effect amplify. And then we automatically calculate what amplification I need to normalize it. And I, all I need to do just hit to apply. So now the volume is good, but lots of noise. So just let me hear what kind of noise I'm talking about. This is testing, one, 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 two, three, testing. As you can see, it's high quality recording, but uh, it has quite a bit of noise. So uh, to get rid of the noise with, K, uh, with Audacity, you want to make sure there is a little bit of silence left when you're not talking, at least a couple of seconds. So th that's the case at the end of this clip. So I'm going to click here, left click with my mouse and drag it to highlight the quiet area. So this area will be used to train my spectral analyzer to remove my noise using spectral techniques. I'm going back, so it's a two-step procedure. I'm going to effect, noise reduction. So first step is to measure noise profile from the quiet part of your video. Now I wanna highlight my whole clip and apply the spectral profile. So I go back to effect, noise reduction. I may need wanna ch change parameters, how much reduction I do in decibels. And I like to choose number of spectral bands to the max, 12, and I hit OK. And as you can see, almost like by magic, this noise seems to be gone. And it's, it's really a much, much high quality sound without noise and still very good quality. This is testing. One, 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 two, three, testing. So it, it works miracles. Uh, unless your video and audio has too super high noise, you usually don't get any artifacts and you get rid of your noise. So let me save this. Uh, export as WAV file, so there is no compression artifacts. I'm going to use the name maybe 2, a separate name, and I'm going to, okay, I saved it. I'm going back to KDN Lab. So I'm going to load it, just the audio. Now it's a corrected audio. And for this to work, you need at least one additional audio track. So I'm going to drag it and drop it around here. I told you I did not synchronize when I recorded this thing. So how do we synchronize the new high quality audio to the video? To achieve that, we actually can tell KDN Lab to synchronize new audio to old audio because that will in turn synchronize this to the video. And there is a very easy automated way to do it. Uh, you want to make sure you have some space on the left side because when it's trying to align things, it needs some room to move things around. So first I, I want to do, I'm going to left click here, right click, and the old audio, bad audio will be set audio reference. So this audio will be used as a reference. Then I'm left clicking on my high quality audio, external audio, and then right click 
align audio to reference. Voila, it's perfectly aligned to the frame with the precision of a single frame. So it's very highly quality aligned to my video. Uh, the only thing, if I try to play it, now it's going to play simultaneously both audio sources. I don't want that. So I can, at least, very least, I can mute it. Maybe I can all hide it. Or if you want to go extreme, you can, uh, you know, ungroup it. You can delete it. And then maybe, again, hide it. And then you can uh, left click, shift left click right click and group it together if that's what you want now they're perfectly synchronized there is still a little bit of fix we need to do i come here you see the edges need to be uh, trimmed so i'm gonna come here left click and i'm gonna use alt arrow alt arrow sorry first i go come here alt arrow goes between ends of clips very easy to precisely find ends of the clip so i'm gonna come here left click here shift r so i want to get rid of this part and then alt arrow come here left click shift r delete voila so i have high quality audio synchronized to my old uh, video testing this is testing of video recording so it's high quality audio no noise essential all right now we are done with the main parts of my presentation the final is how to render all this thing you just created you want to render them with a high quality with a destination maybe being youtube or your professional website or maybe you want to just send a clip through email something like that i will show in a second one can choose which preset to use i like to work with this preset it's mp4 container and the video format is h264 and audio format is AAC. So this format works very well with modern uh, settings. It works well with, you, with YouTube and any other uh, purposes you might wanna use it for. Uh, so let me show you how to render your projects. So once you're done with the project, you go to project render. I'm gonna come here, render project tab. By default, it's full project. And here are the uh, presets you can use. So I like to use this one generic and then MP4, the one I just described. I, my advice is to create a custom preset because it gives you more options. Actually, you don't see too many options. Left click on this preset and then you come here. Save current preset as a new custom preset. Don't forget to give it a new name, for example, mine or something. And now you can change other parameters. I don't touch usually things like resolution, etc. In that way, it will be applicable to any resolution. Uh, but what I like now, I, I have control over quantizer. So for those familiar with, uh, you know, H.264 compression video format. So this is the quantizer. The smaller the value is, the higher quality is, but much larger size of the file becomes. So 23 creates a reasonably good quality. If you have a live video, like in this example, which has noisy video, like cell phone, camcorder, etc., I do not recommend going beyond 18 because you will not see any, uh, uh, and this scale is logarithmic, some sort of logarithmic. So don't go too much lower because file size will become ginormous. If instead all your sources are noise free, like screen capture, you can go maybe as low as three or even two. That's what I use for my webinar editing. But let's stick to the 23 hit OK, and this is mine, my new name. And so next time you come here, it's going to be there. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm going to override the all. You just click here, or when you double click, you can change quantize. If next time you want to change, you can still reuse your preset. You just change quantize. So we are ready to render our project now using the quality setting I discussed. Make sure it's full project, render to file. Before I do that, uh, just one more thing I wanted to demonstrate. What if your video has shakiness? It needs to be stabilized. KD and Live can do that for you. So to do that, you come here, right click on your clip, choose clip job and stabilize. There are a large number of parameters you can choose. You have to understand when you do software stabilization of shaky video, you have to sacrifice some of your uh, angle of view. So you will see less on your video because it needs some edges, room to compensate for shakiness, right? So in my experience, default parameters should be good enough. You click OK, and it will create a separate video file where shakiness was taken 
off and then you can add it to your project and do uh, the rest of the editing. I don't have time to do that. Just let me go back to project render mine. I'm double checking my quant quality is 23, good enough. A render to, uh, wait, I'm gonna give it name. Uh, choose my folder. Uh, let's go with mine. Hit save and hit render to file. Uh, depending on the quality you're using, depending on the length of your video, it can take from minutes to hours, but this will take around one minute total rendering time. It keeps rendering, but at this point, presentation is over. Thank you very much.